seven committee seems to change from folk music to say folk music died and Bob um, Dylan picked up a guitar. We're going to give you a little mental whiplash here by transitioning from the early 70s to late 70s, early 80s to some classic um, Christian rock and roll. We're going to go back to the stage. You guys were here a few weeks ago. Frank Rock's Jesus guys, we're glad to have you back.
You drink from the Bible. There's nothing better than the Word of God. I can't copy that. And there's nothing I can say that's going to be better than the Word of God. So, there it is. Jesus rocks, baby. Say something. Thanks for having us. We're from Wilmington, Delaware. We're a friend rocks Jesus. We're on all the various social media, you know, Facebook and all that. It's all one word, Frank Rods, Jesus. The reason I say that is we go anywhere that anyone will allow us to come to evangelize the name of Jesus. And we ask that anybody who wants to come and help us spread his name to the world is invited. So on all our media, we say where we are. We're from Wilmington, but we do a lot of stuff in Philly. We do a lot of stuff here in Jersey. A lot of Jersey teams invite us back, so we'll keep coming. But... We need everybody to get out there and share the word of God. Who Jesus is and what he did for us. Amen. Hey! Again, this is our uh, give thanks. This looks like Psalm 30. Hey, Psalm 104. So anyway, we're going to put it all together. We're going to Psalm 4. Give thanks.
looking at the right value, providing for yourself. God will take care of you. He's everything. He's the beginning and the end. Alpha and the Omega. And we can't get our mind around it because we're not infinite. We're not forever. We have to say, well, how, where did God begin? We don't know, man, because we have a beginning and we have an ending, but he has none. You know? And in order for us to get our little brains around that, it's pretty impossible. But, you know, all he does is ask us to believe in Jesus and believe in his son and that he paid our bill. That's what we have to do. And then we have to come to him as little children. He says it. And I'm all right with that. <laughs>
I gotta change guitars, I can't play this. Right. But he's from Philly, he knows how to sweat, just like Rocky. And, um, we're happy to be here, we're happy to see all the people out there, and we know that you all believe in Jesus the way we do. He is the way, the truth, the life, just like your sign says out here, and he is the one <laughs> only way to heaven. And it's our privilege to be able to be part of the great commission that he calls all of us to be. So we're hoping that all of you are part of that too. I saw a whole bunch of people out there handing out um, tracks, uh, some in green, some in blue. It's really nice to come down and see that there's people all over that do believe in Jesus a lot of people. And I think Frank's got his guitar's dry, so we'll start again. <laughs> Alright, this one's called With God. Yeah!
take this call from the Bible. I just can't read where I wrote it. Yeah. But it's from the Bible, I promise you. He can look it up. Early I will seek you. He says, oh God, you're my God. You are my God. And early I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. In a dry and thirsty land. That's where we are, people. We're in a dry and thirsty land. And my soul thirsts for Jesus. And I love it. Can't believe it, man. Say something. <laughs> I gotta tell you, Frank, usually you're the one that's hot and the rest of us are not sweating at all. I'm sweating. I, I think this is like, I thought this was too bad. But it's good. It's good to be on the Jersey Shore in July. Yeah. Can't get any better than that. Jersey, baby! Woo! We love Jersey! You know, I'm from Philly. Just so you know that. I'm not really from Delaware, I'm from Philly. But he's from Chaz Ford, my boy's from Beefville. I ain't gonna know. But that's okay. He just went to court today because he was speeding. All right? Everybody, everybody gets busted. He was speeding. And the only reason they let him go is because he's 17 years old. Yeah, how about it? I have to go to court with him today because he was speeding. The cop says, are you going to punish him? I said, believe me. <laughs> it all breaks his hands. Yeah.
and Luke 32. <laughs> Hope in my eyes that I may see. Hope in my eyes that I may see. Hope in my eyes that I may see. The wonderful things in your life. Jesus. 
Christ, I come to you. I admit that I'm a sinner and I repent of all my sins. I know that your son Jesus died for my salvation. I believe he rose from the dead and I accept him into my life. I confess that Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. If you said that prayer, you are now going to heaven. And nothing, nothing, nothing can snatch you out of the Father's hand because you're there. All right, anyway, God bless everybody. I love you. Thank you. Thank you guys for coming, Frankie, especially thank you for, that's the hottest place on the boardwalk is in that case. <laughs> Let's just close up with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your kindness. Thank you for sustaining us tonight. Thank you uh, for Rich Fuller earlier. Thank you for Frank Rock Jesus and these guys for coming and testifying with you. We thank you for the many conversations we're able to have in the back, the many tracks we're able to hand out, the many people who stopped in and, and listened for a while. We pray that you would work each one of their lives. We pray that you keep the band safe as they travel back, Father, during the storm. Thank you for allowing us to continue. We've been through the storm, Father, and keep, keep all the power on and keep going. We do thank you for that. We pray that you dismiss us now with your blessing. May you be exalted in all we do. In the name of our Lord, we ask this. Amen. Thank you for coming. And good night.
But we are so glad to have you guys. Um, you really are a blessing. I'm glad you're enjoying each other. We've got one more day with you all, and then you head out. So tomorrow, has Morio talked to you guys about VBS or anything yet? Okay, all right. Tomorrow morning, I'm guessing, at some point, she'll talk to you guys. As long as we're not getting rain, we'll do VBS. And Danny and Alexander are not up with it's, it's the same as always. should be 2 o'clock. Um, should be 2, because 1 o'clock we'll do training, so 2 o'clock we'll head over and do VBS. It's usually it. Do you agree? Are you okay with that, Kim? Yeah, I was just asking you. Yeah, it should be 2 o'clock. It should be 2 o'clock, because they do training from 1 to 2. So they'll at least be, if you don't see any of them in the morning, you'll at least see them at 1 o'clock, and you'll have that time to get set up. It is a really nice outreach. It actually is one of those weird things that wasn't started by the leadership. It was started by uh, the staff members who just wanted to go over to the housing projects right by where the staff lives and minister to the kids, and they've been doing it for probably almost 10 years now, going back every year. And every year the staff does it. I don't mandate it. Every year the staff says they want to go and do that. So it's been a wonderful thing. So um, if you get out there with them, that'd be great. And then let Sarah know what you want to do in the program tomorrow night. Just want to get you guys involved for your last night. Just want to talk to you for a few minutes on how you can make this happen. Again, yeah. for one, if you guys want to come back as a youth group or as two youth groups together again, just to talk to your leaders. Um, right now, the week is yours. You just let us know. Uh, you know, I'll talk to you tomorrow night, and I'll talk to you. Her, not you. I like talking to you. Know. <laughs> well, we'll talk. Uh, I'll talk to the leaders tomorrow night to talk a little bit more about it. But we'd love, to, we'd love to have you back. Also, if we say doing it every year is a little rough and that's hard to do, just let us know. We can get into a cycle of every other year, every third year. We just like that. We keep coming back. We're trying to get as many groups back as we can. Um, coming and filling in over years, but we know there's other OP um, or re reformed um, summer ministries that you could be part of too. So we're just glad for any time you could partner with us and be part of us. Some of you, let me just talk a little bit about what it like, it's like to be on staff. Because some of you might say, this was pretty cool and I'd like to come for the whole summer because that's something that's really, really cool. Actually, it's really hot, but it's a cool thing to do because <laughs> it gets really hot over there in the house. Um, if you want to be on staff, you need to be. 17 or over. Usually we like to, to have finished your junior year in high school. It's more the, the age is the bigger thing really than school years because we so um, sometimes we have homeschoolers and at 17 you could have been like done with your PhD or still in the third grade. Okay, so kind of, <laughs> there's this, we know of course our there's, there's a span there. <laughs> you know, some of you, you're the only one who could drive in your entire class of other sixth graders and others of you are being dropped off by your mom, you know, to be the teacher's assistant at the community college. So it's, it's the homeschool gets, gets kind of crazy there. Um, but to come here, what does it take? For one, you need to send in your application. If you want it to be in by January 1st, because we fill up really fast now. Um, what you need is your application and just a recommendation from your session, just saying, yeah, they think you're mature enough to come. If you want to come, you need to think about what team you want to be on. Um, we actually have four separate teams. There's music, drama, evangelism, and domestic support, okay? And what, why we did that is because we know, I mean, it takes a lot to make a ministry work, and there's things that you don't always know, and we want everybody to be able to play to their strengths. So music means during the day, during the training time, you get extra training in music working with the music team, so you can be part of that. We need drummers, so Frankie can think about that while he's going home, we'll pray about that. <laughs> um, but you're on the music team, so your primary thing is to be here to work with the music team. But you still go out and do evangelism every night. Or you might be like, you know what, I can stand here and do music. I can sing in front of you know thousands of people. But you move me beyond the last board they're on the boardwalk, and I'm scared to death to talk to people. You'll go out on evangelism teams, but you might just be there to pray with them. And just be their wingman, just so people don't have to go by themselves. Um, same thing with drama. We teach you how to use your dra dramatic abilities to present the gospel and share the gospel. So you'll do your extra time in the afternoon on the drama team. And at night, again, you'll go out with the evangelism teams, but we're not going to force you to do something that you're scared to death to do and don't feel comfortable doing. You might spend your whole first summer just being with another team, just being there to pray with them, make sure there's another person there. Evangelism team, you get extra training in evangelism. So in the afternoons, while the music team and drama team are practicing in here, people are stopping. So we just do evangelism all afternoon and then into the evening. If we get more people, this year we actually started with having an evangelism team in the morning. You may have seen them if you've gotten up before the crack of noon. There's actually been three people here 
um, to do evangelism in the mornings as well. So the more evangelism team people we have, the more time we have to get out there sharing the gospel. People start hitting the boardwalk about 6 o'clock in the morning. So the more people we have, we can actually start you know, getting more people out there. You need a lot of training in evangelism and apologetics. Um, just so you get an idea of the training you go through. The first week you're here, I do the training for everybody. We do 30 basically one-hour lectures on theology and apologetics. Then that, that's week one. Okay, so that's probably more training than you get in most other ministries in an entire summer or an entire year. Then the next week we bring in Dr. Prabhanan, and he does about 20 to 30 hours worth of lectures in evangelism. Then the third week, Dr. Prabhanan brings in a couple of evangelists that have gone with him um, either to Uganda or different places in the States. We get Al Baker comes in from Presbyterian Evangelist Fellowship who goes and does evangelism in places like the Super Bowl or NASCAR events. Um, Wes Hollins from down in um, Tampa, Florida, who does evangelism in Uganda with Dr. King and some others. And then they actually take you out and do evangelism with you and show you how to do it for a week. So the first